Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Happy Wednesday. If you feel so inclined, please turn your cameras on. We love to see your faces. Um, we'll let everybody get connected, but before uh, that, while we're waiting, if you wanna drop in the chat box how you heard about our event today, whether it's LinkedIn, an email, some other social media site, you heard it through the grapevine, whatever it is, put it in the chat box. And if you're not already following us on our social media, um, please make sure to follow us on LinkedIn. We post a lot on there, but we also have Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And you can find us at HGAC by on most of those platforms. Yay. Okay. Email. All right. All right. Well, I don't want to take up too much of everybody's time. Um, welcome. Good morning. My name is Nicolette Greenhouse. I'm the outreach coordinator for HJC by and you are currently in our um, virtual open house event. And this is our fire service apparatus event and we have lovely vendors here to present for you um, their products and services. But before we start that, I'm going to do a quick introduction around the room. Somewhere on my screen is Joshua Cartier. Give them a wave, Joshua. He is your co-host. I mean, we're all co-hosts, but he's one of your co-hosts. He's a procurement coordinator for this contract. Somewhere on my screen as well is Marlena Mack. Give a wave, Marlena. Um, hey. She is a, the member liaison, so she is here to help any of y'all with any questions that you may have. We also have Kristen Graben on the call. She is another outreach coordinator for HGAC BY, um, as well as Jim Glover is on, also on the call. Hi, Jim. So that is our team. We all look the same. That's how you can tell the difference um, with our backgrounds. Um, and before we get started with our presentation today, we are going to do a very quick presentation from HGAC BY. <laughs> Um, so I will be pulling that up in here in a second. Give me one moment. Good morning and welcome to HJAC Buys Virtual Open House. We know you have some very busy schedules out there, but you're here with us. I'm your host, Joshua Cartier, and this is my lovely co-host, Nicolette Greenhouse. That's right, Josh. We're excited to share a little bit about HJC BY and today's featured contracts with you. So let's get right into it. Sure thing. Why don't we start with a little bit of trivia? If you know what HJC BY stands for, drop it in the chat box below. I'll give you a hint. While our offices are located in Houston, Texas, we are a nationwide property purchasing program that have been operating for over 45 years. That's right, Josh. As a contractor-funded program, we help thousands of local governments save millions of dollars by offering competitively bid contracts all completely free. Going out to bid for our members not only saves them money, but a considerable amount of time. Aha, and time is money. That's why we make the joining process very simple. We have the interlocal contract form on our website, and we'll be dropping links to that right now. We'll also be answering that trivia question for you guys. HGAC buy, helping governments across the country buy. That's what we do and that's our name. Yes, it is, Josh. Another important fact about HGAC buy is that we take pride in partnering with others to make the cooperative purchasing process simpler and more beneficial. For instance, current members of Sacramento Area Council of Governments, Mid-America Regional Council, Baltimore Metropolitan Council, and the Municipal Association of South Carolina automatically become members of HGAC BY, and they do not have to complete the online ILC form. Additionally, all members of HGAC BY, regardless of how you join, can get the wonderful benefits of our collaboration with the National Cooperative Procurement Partners. Wonderful, Nicolette. Speaking of those benefits, let's not forget that HGAC BY keeps all of our solicitation documents available for our, mer for our members at their request. In addition, unlike most other cooperative purchasing programs, we ensure the compliance of all of our orders. When it comes time to be audited, that could be a lifesaver. A lifesaver for sure, Josh. Well, that's all for us this morning. If you would like to learn more about HJC BY or you would like to contact us, please download that contact card in the chat box below. And as Nicholas said, that's all we have today, guys. Let's turn it over to our vendors. All right, great job, virtual Josh and virtual Nicolette. <laughs> Okay, the, as they said, those links will be dropped in there below. You make sure to 
utilize all of those. But we are going to go right along to our first vendor, and that is going to be BME, and that's Emily and Al. Take it away. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. Yes, sir. We're Everybody seeing Everybody got that. it? Take it away, Al. Okay. Well, first of all, before we start on, on our, our side, I do want to give a quick shout out to you guys at HGAC. So um, for everyone working or, or on the call, that has not used HGAC before, as a manufacturer um, and a prime contract, I will let you know that all of these fine people make doing business very, very easy with the prospective manufacturers. And they're a lot of fun too. They just, we just saw them at FDIC and they were all over the trucks taking pictures. They had all the swag on. So you'll have, um, you'll have fun doing it. It's, very, very simple. And it will, like they said, save lots of money. So we get, we get scrubbed and our best prices are, are on this as well. So anyway, quick shout out to you guys. We appreciate everything you do. Now to start into BME. Uh, some of you in the room uh, may have heard of us and some of you may have not. We are the premier wildland provider of apparatus. We're located in Boise, Idaho. Um, we started in 1990 very, very small um, and have grown. We actually started <clears throat> as we got rolling and were kind of labeled, uh, I'm gonna say a, a green company because we did a lot of, of work with the uh, Forest Service and the BLM and those kind of things. And those have been tremendous uh, contracts with us and we've loved working with, with those organizations. Um, and also we have, uh, when, when our new owner took over, uh, Chad Moffitt, I'm going to say about six years ago, he also moved us out of that, just that stereotype realm into red trucks um, and increased the arena of what we provide. So we have um, increased our capacity, our volume. We started out in a, a very small facility uh, in 1990. Um, it became very apparent that we were continuing to grow. I'm going to say about six years ago, five years ago, we added a second facility, about double the size of the original one. And we were using those in conjunction. So our original facility was being used to build our custom trucks. And our new facility, which was about twice as big, was being used to build our contract trucks. I don't want to say cookie cutters, but more of our contract trucks. Um, and then about a year ago, we purchased another facility that um, dwarfs our original two. And so we have about 50 acres. We've increased the size of our production space tremendously. It's gonna allow us to do a lot of different things as far as running dedicated lines for trucks, increased production on parts, serviceability synergy of the people bringing them in-house into one facility. The reason I tell you that backstory is it's allowed us to increase our offerings um, increase our um, build times. And so it's been a tremendous, um, tremendous tool. At BME, our fire trucks are unlike any other of their kind. Each apparatus is designed by top-notch engineers and built from the ground up right here in the USA. We don't just build fire trucks. At BME, we make it our mission to build the best wildland apparatus because safety, technology, and hard work are not to be taken for granted. And just like the firefighters that risk their lives, we are willing to do what others won't, able to do what others can't. Yeah, tremendous. So what I hope you took away from that is, is we have a dedicated group of people that have grown and continue to grow their skills um, and that what is what make us, makes us the wildland uh, benchmark in the industry. So there's a couple platforms that you guys are probably very familiar with that we've put on here. And these are some of our major offerings. Uh, this specific one is a Model 34 Type 3. Uh, you're probably familiar with this. This is the same type of model that Cal Fire uses. And we build all of their trucks through our contract on the Model 34 end. Um, they, they have a few different um, little nuances that they put in, but this, this type of engine has become super popular 
And it was primarily popular uh, in dedicated segments of the West Coast, and it is starting to expand eastward uh, because of its functionality. It is a just a no-nonsense workhorse, uh, great truck. Uh, then we have our wildland urban interface. And so this is a type two engine uh, in some areas that we call it a type one, type three, verbiage is different, but this checks a lot of boxes. Um, it has uh, the full ladder complement. Um, it will help all of your ISO ratings. This is actually the first one that we've built and we will continue to develop this model. Um, it does have some customization availabilities, but this just was rolled out at FDIC and uh, which I'll go into a little bit later, our dealer network will have this available for viewing in the near future. So um, this is our, our WUI engine. And next we have our tactical tender. This has been a workhorse for us as well. Um, four wheel drive, uh, short wheel base, very nimble. Um, it's got some customization availabilities as well. Uh, if you need a tack tender, this is the best one on the market. And then this is something we unveiled uh, last year, was our first one basically. Uh, our extreme tactical tender. This is like the big Tonka truck of tenders. It's got 53 inch tires and it's a monster. Uh, 1,250 gallons of water. We can do it in a two-door or a four-door uh, scenario. Um, very, very popular, and it's getting more popular as well. You can go anywhere in that thing. Uh, our Type 6 offerings, this is uh, broken into, in, as far as this screen goes, into two different models. We have our Extreme Type 6, which is, again, the bigger tires lift. It gives you um, the capability to go in a, different, uh, a lot of different um, um, areas that you would not be able to go with your traditional or stereotypical type six, more utility style body. We can offer that extreme and our type six um, on, on any chassis platform, uh, the Dodge, the Ford, the CV, Chevy, um, whatever your department wants and is available right now, as we all know. So our top type six line is very versatile. We have a lot of customization options, uh, something to keep in mind if you're wanting to go there. Okay, so I wanted to save some time for this. And I know I'm running short on time. I promise we'll try to make it quick. But we have switched over in the last five, six months from a direct purchase model, meaning as a department, you could just call Boise Mobile Equipment and order a truck, to now to a dealer network. And so um, you will need to call your local Pierce dealer uh, to, to get a BME truck now. Um, everything is still the same as far as BME. We still make the trucks the same. Our uh, owner is still makes all the decisions as far as that goes, uh, but the purchasing model has changed. So you're gonna see uh, these first five dealers that are coming up on the screen. These are the first dealers that we've onboarded and we are getting all of our logistics together. And these dealers have been gracious. They've been fantastic on helping us as a manufacturer new to this model to start put all this in place. And then as we get everything streamlined, we will start moving this eastward and onboarding the rest of the dealers as well in the near future. So it's been a tremendous relationship. I can't say enough good things. And, and, and the big thing for BME and for you all in the room is if you're in uh, California, uh, you buy a truck in Idaho and you go over to North Carolina for whatever reason, um, where are you going to get it worked on? So that was before. Now we have opened up the uh, Pierce dealer warranty service centers all over the nation for you to take your BME truck to and obtain service or warranty work. So it's been a tremendous relationship. We're super excited. It's only going to get better. But if you have any questions, I know I'm running short on time. If you have any questions at all, please um, let us know. We're going to be in one of the breakout rooms, I think, here after this is over. So we'll make ourselves available. We, we are super excited to work with you through our dealer network and let us know if we can be of assistance in any way. The end. Great oh, job, Al. Thank you, and I apologize I ran over a little bit, but you give me give me the platform and you got to just take the hook and pull me off the stage. So um, <laughs> thank you again, guys. Oh, no, it was good. It was great information. Great job. We I do want to say really quickly, there won't be breakout rooms this year. It'll be a general Q&A session just so oh, everybody. Yeah. Sorry about that. So you'll get even more stage time, Al, oh, just perfect. main stage time, main perfect. character energy. Um, but we're going to move right along to our next vendor that is going to be Custom Fire, and Wade is going to present for us today.
Hello, everyone. Thanks for uh, taking the time out of your schedules to join us in the HGAC uh, presentations. Uh, we've been with HGAC for a number of years now, and we, we love this relationship. Um, Custom Fire is a small manufacturer of uh, fire pumpers and rescue vehicles. We also build tenders and, and smaller rigs like, um, you know, the different uh, brush trucks and types of apparatus on four-wheel drive chassis or light rescues. Um, one of the things that we really uh, um, focus on with Custom Fire, especially in the day of, in the days today of, uh, of conglomerates and acquisitions, as Al just described, we uh, remain independent and small manufacturer. We find from our customers that what they appreciate about Custom Fire is that we, we stick to our uh, philosophy of building uh, highly customized apparatus unique to the end user. And they appreciate the fact that we are privately held in a small non-corporate environment. Um, our business is family owned. It's still under the ownership, ownership of the founder. We were founded in 1978. We build around uh, two to three trucks a month. And that depends on the nature of the beast, so to speak. Right now we're building a 4,000 gallon per minute rear mount uh, industrial pumper for a, uh, a, a refinery uh, corporation down in Texas. Um, we are factory direct. We work with local service providers uh, based on what the customer wants. So a, a question comes in from five states away, we will still uh, work with them factory direct, but we will work with their service provider to do annual testing and any sort of after sales service warranty or beyond warranty uh, type work. Uh, the last two HGAC contracts we received were uh, one was from Connecticut, uh, it's a repeat customer, and one is a new customer from North Dakota. In both cases, they are uh, going to use their local service provider. Customer buyer does not, you know, send a mechanic five states away if necessary. Um, but uh, we find that that is the way to provide continuity to our customers. They can work with the people that have been doing their service for years, and uh, we're happy to facilitate that, however possible. Um, we talk about four uh, tenets of the company: customized configurations, durable construction confident ownership and customer care. The customization comes into, I, you know, I've kind of started calling it packaging. We're like a design build company, if you if you will. Uh, when I work with my clients, I, I find myself um, doing somewhat uh, architecture type work, uh, discussing their equipment desires, where they want to carry their equipment, how they want to access it looking at the priorities that they might have it might be hose bed height which means that we have to influence the body and the tank shape uh, might be water capacity which might come at a higher priority than where their ladders are stored for example in the photos here you can see that we've obviously done a lot of creative uh, layouts of suction hose booster reels ladders uh, optimized packaging uh, tons of different body designs equipment and tool mounting and all manner of pump configurations. We build enclosed top mounts, rear mount pumpers, side mounts, outside top mounts. We work with Darley Hail waters, fire pumps. We use uh, Hail and Foam Pro and Fire Research foam systems and waters foam systems, of course. Uh, we built the first CAPS pumper with a waters system back in the late 90s. And today we're building uh, numerous industrial pumpers for uh, uh, petrochemical industries and um, 4,000. We actually uh, recently put a truck in Coke, Coke refineries that did 6,500 gallons a minute. So we're very familiar with the full span of pumpers uh, <clears throat> and rescues. Uh, we talk about durability being more than just, you know, tougher, thicker materials. It gets into the, the type of materials. We use a lot of stainless steel we use virtually no steel. The, uh, you know, actually, you can see about the only place we do use steel is in our underbody receiver points. Uh, we have extremely de dependable electronics. Our tank and body mounts are all uh, stainless steel. And then our plumbing is just exquisite uh, in terms of the um, construction 
quality and the performance. We use um, all round stainless steel plumbing, never use a box tube. Uh, everything is flanged or Victaulic coupled. Uh, we 3D model everything and we provide an as-built plumbing diagram. So we really get into the nitty gritty and the, and the guts of the truck when we're building it. We, you know, we can make them all pretty with stripes and flags and chrome, but at the end of the day, it is a tool, it is a machine, and it's meant to do a job. And that is uh, providing safety and response. So we have, uh, in that effort, we have extremely um, well-engineered and built electrical systems and plumbing, as I said. So those are really the systems of the truck that, that get the job done along with the manpower, of course. But single point electronics, stainless steel manifolds, as-built diagrams for everything you receive, uh, the easy to own part, I touched on that at the beginning where we are a factory direct company, but we're easy to work with and the truck is easy to own because we work with the people that, that you prefer to work with uh, for those sorts of things. So parts availability, we don't push you through a dealer network. We don't conceal the part numbers. We don't do massive upcharges. Um, you're gonna get uh, real reasonable access to parts and equipment throughout the life of our relationship. And then um, the, uh, it, the warranties are the best in the industry. We have non-prorated paint warranties. We have lifetime warranties on our apparatus body, subframes and tank cradles and poly tanks. And then we meet or exceed any other warranty on components or systems in the industry. Uh, we do use a bolted method of construction versus welded. So there is a nitty gritty kind of part of what differentiates us. Uh, the bolted construction has been something we've been doing since the beginning. Uh, the method of construction has been copied by other manufacturers lately, uh, which frankly just gives us more credence for what we're doing, that we've been doing it right for over 40 years. And when you see the product, it's pretty obvious in the uh, fit and finish and uh, quality of construction. And ultimately, as a small family business that's independent, uh, we rely on our customers. Uh, we look at our relationships with our customers as a partnership. We feel obligated to ensure that they are successful in their endeavors, that the uh, expectations that they've set out for their apparatus and their performance for, um, for their customers are uh, as important to us as they are to them. Uh, we provide routine production photos while you're having a truck built. Everybody's real friendly and courteous. I hear that time and time again from customers that visit is how great the people on the shop floor and in the office are, how excited they are to host customers and talk about their profession. Um, we will not pigeonhole you into a cookie cutter design or uh, any sort of pre-engineered um, formats. Uh, you know, customization is very affordable with Custom Fire. And um, we will authorize support by your local service center. And we are a very small non-corporate environment. People love not being treated like a number. They love being associated with the name of their agency or their first and last name. And believe it or not, uh, if you're a customer with Custom Fire, you get to meet all the people in our organization and the relationships last. Uh, these are just some of the photos of similar base models that we have available through HGAC. I have yet to be stumped by uh, a design that can't be met with our options and base models. Um, so there really is no reason to think that you can't totally customize a truck with HGAC. They're fantastic people, awesome to work with, love what they do, and make it fun for us to, to work with them. And uh, you know, we see it with our buyers too. They go back to HGAC. So thank you for your attention and we'd love to honor your service with our superior products. All right, great job, Wade. Those were our presenters. Let's give them a round of applause. Good job, guys. Awesome, all right. We will now move on to our question and answer session. So if you have any questions for our vendors, you can raise your hand, you can unmute, you can put it in the chat box and we'll say it for you, whatever uh, works for you. 
I know we have questions. We always have questions. <laughs> what are your current capabilities with your vehicles in regards to traversing water? Like let's say during a flood event because in Houston, when it rains, it pours. Okay, well, yeah, definitely. So I guess there's different levels. I, you know, we don't offer an amphibious duck like you see in Branson, mm -hmm. but uh, we've got anywhere from our, our traditional standard build, whether it's in a type six or a tactical tender, like you saw in the pictures, all the way up to lifted bigger tires, you know, the, the ground clearance that you need. Obviously common sense comes into play all the time. And, you know, there's always the, um, the saying or the adage that four wheel drive just takes you into places you shouldn't be anyway. But having said that, uh, it does open up uh, some different avenues if you need to get a little bit further. And so there's some options out there with just the build capabilities of, and ground clearance. I'd say that would lend itself to a little bit uh, deeper areas. Uh, I guess that's the best way to answer that for us anyway. Thanks, Al. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, that's a question. So for water fording capabilities, certainly with climate change and everything and, and the storms we're seeing certainly in your area and actually <laughs> this year in Northern Minnesota, they um, have experienced uh, record setting flooding because of the amount of snow and snowpack running out. Um, it's a fairly sparsely populated part of the world. So you don't see a lot, lot of need for um, water fording, but uh, so we use a lot of Spartan chassis and um, Spartan has made some design improvements in recent years uh, to raise the air intake. Uh, also, um, design options for the uh, axles and and exhaust systems to make it more suitable to uh, to ford water. Uh, I mean, the fact of the matter is that, you know, if a firefighter sees a need, he or she is going to run to it and uh, they'll take their equipment in tow with them. And, um, you know, the, the so if you're thinking of like how high can you go? The air intake on a Spartan is is near um, the top of the uh, face of the cab, where it used to be down below the bumper. Uh, so that's that's been a huge improvement. Uh, they're using non-corrosive frame rails as well with galvanized coatings. So uh, depending on the type of water, if it's brackish or whatever, um, you know, there's there's that added level of protection on the commercial chassis side. You're going to see air intake snorkels make available. I'm sure BME has those as well on the Navistar or Freightliner chassis. Like you see on a Toyota uh, Tacoma or a Land Rover many times, uh, same thing can be done with a, a commercial chassis. So you're talking, uh, you know, two to three feet um, of, of uh, capabilities in many cases. All right. So basically sounds like it can go in water up to a certain point. Good question, Josh. Thank you. Um, I have one more question, unless one of our members wanted to take it away. Seeing silence out there in the world. Um, I'll go ahead and shoot. Um, let's say, um, do you guys believe that electric trucks will ever kind of find a place in the market where they just be like really niche? They're coming, they're here. Um, we're not we're not building any ourselves, but they're you know they're our our client base isn't uh, probably of the of the type to um, embrace that right now uh, because you're seeing kind of selective uh, you know pockets um, you know on, on the in, in the coasts and that sort of thing. But um, Spartan is working on that. Sutfin is working on that, and those are the two chassis that we offer on the custom side and on the commercial side. Honestly, the fire industry is just such a, it's a tiny, tiny market for a lot of these commercial chassis manufacturers. So that they're really not going to prioritize uh, fire pumpers, possibly rescue trucks where you're just kind of hauling a body around, but, or, you know, apparatus body around, I should say. Um, you know, the, uh, I, I believe that they're coming in the, in the more, you know, you, you might look at a, a change in the in the NFPA code or ISO standards to embrace what can be done with with EVs. What I mean by that is changing the pump and tank and equipment 
requirements to make it more suitable for an EV chassis to, to accomplish. Right now, the capabilities are fairly limited, you know, just like, um, you know, with, with the cars. I mean, you know, Ford and, and Rivian and, and Lordstown and GM, they're coming out with, you know, trucks, uh, EV trucks, but, you know, and yeah, they will tow, but you're not going to tow a boat and then go drive another 300 miles. You, you just, you exhaust the uh, stored energy and um, the same things with the, with the fire service. So you might see an EV get, get the, get the truck there, but then they're going to fire up a diesel engine, which it carries to, to do a pump. So it's a lot of this EV is, is kind of the, still in the, in the very feel good, look good, altruistic stage of the industry. And then as the, um, as a technology advances and becomes more accessible and affordable, you'll definitely see it. And you're going to see a lot more of it in 10 years, you know, obviously. Do you have any thoughts on it? Yeah, no, I, I, I agree completely. I think right now you're seeing that arena geared towards the municipal trucks. And um, I think we'll be a little while on the wildland side. It's, there's a lot of obstacles to overcome, no pun intended, but um, on the wildland side. Uh, so, yeah, I, it's not something that we're entertaining at the moment. And so uh, I don't have a lot of information on it. Again, more municipal truck driven at the moment. Fair enough. Um, thanks for answering that, guys. Um, that's all I had, unless somebody else wanted to jump in. If not, we're going to go ahead and set you guys free to the wonderful world. That's right. Very good. Very good. Um, with that being said, thank you, Josh. Um, we are going to end it here. A couple of announcements before everybody trickles off. Um, Marlena has dropped the open house link. Please make sure to come to the open houses that we have for the rest of the year. We have some really incredible vendors that are going to present for those. Please make sure to also visit us at conferences. We're going to conferences a lot this year. Um, so please make sure to come by and see us at our booths. Well, thank you everybody for coming. Um, please have a great day and thank you again to our vendors. Another round of applause. Yeah, yeah. thank you guys. Thank you. Good see to ya. see you, Wade. Yeah, you too. I'll take care. All, All right. right. Thanks. Have a good day. Ladies.